When I drive a car that's as rare as a Kia Cadillac, there are a couple things going through my mind. First thing is how lucky I am. It embodies everything that we like about cars. The other half of that is it's not mine. And if something happens to it, it's my neck. My name is Leslie Kendall. I am the chief curator of the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. The Peterson Automotive Museum was the vision of Margie and Robert E. Peterson. Um, anybody that's known anything about cars will probably recognize at least two magazines. One is Hot Rod Magazine, the other is Motor Trend Magazine. Uh, well, Mr. Peterson was the Peterson of Peterson Publishing. He became very, very successful doing what he did, and he wanted to give back to, to Los Angeles. So he established the Peterson Automotive Museum in a disused department store. The vehicle that we're talking about today, the 1953 Cadillac uh, with Ghia coachwork, it was one of two built, and it was the one that was acquired by Ali Khan for Rita Hayworth. Legend has it that while they had broken up, he was still interested in her and wanted to get her back, therefore bought the car. If that story's true, it didn't work, but Rita made out okay, she got the car. We think it was built on spec. There were two built by Ghia. One was on the cover of the January 1955 issue of Road & Track magazine. It was blue in color with certain small detail differences. This was the second car built, ended up on the west coast of California, actually in the Los Angeles area, painted white, or a very, very light color of an appliance white, which really didn't suit the lines. The car ended up changing hands several times. Mr. Peterson acquired it from a collector in Germany and uh, had it re-restored. Although we know that the car was painted white early on, we don't know what the original color really was. So we decided that during the restoration, we would paint it a color that complemented its lines, that wouldn't distract from the sculptural qualities of the uh, overall finish. Back in the 50s, the car was indeed special, but it was built to drive. You didn't spend the kind of money that Ali Khan would have spent on this car and not drive it around or not want the person to whom you gave it to drive it around. During the 1950s, it was still possible for anyone to acquire just the chassis from a manufacturer and then have it sent for a custom body to be built. And that custom body could be anything. You could specify two seats, four seats, two doors, four doors, three windows, six windows, eight windows. Um, you could specify convertible, a land delay, a town car, anything. The sky was the limit. And usually people went to the coach builder that was kind of hitting on um, what they already liked. So if I liked a, a car with high crown fenders and deep set headlights, I would go to Ghia. They interpreted that theme extremely well on the Cadillac. In fact, they interpreted it on many cars. Cars as big as Chrysler, cars as small as Fiat. And it's probably the reason that the Italian coachwork ended up on such a practical American car because you've got very reliable American underpinnings that you could have service to any gas station. And on the outside, you've got this incredibly voluptuous coachwork. It's the best of both worlds. Because of its provenance and its beauty and its, its rarity and its condition and its public appeal, we like taking the Ghia Cadillac out. Um, we've had it at the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance. It won best in class. Most recently, we had it at the Arizona Concord d'Elegance, where it won the Director's Trophy. We're very gratified by that. The future that we have in mind for the Ghia Cadillac is to retain it. We're not a used car dealer. We don't acquire cars and sell them. Everything we take, we intend to keep for the long term. We don't like, want to expend our limited resources on things that, that we know we're not going to have for a while. And this is exactly the kind of car that we like because of how important it is intrinsically and how important it is um, historically. Um, it's associated with a very important figure in entertainment. People are always going to be interested in that kind of thing and that's going to make us interesting to them.